everybody, and welcome back to HardAssetsInvestor.com. I'm Mike Norman, your host. My guest today is Marshall Beryl. He is the co-manager of the Encompass Fund, specializing in commodities. Marshall, thanks very much for coming on the show. Appreciate your having me. So um, I know you uh, focus, your fund is focused on, on commodities, your long term, your, your bullish, uh, notwithstanding the, the pullback. And in some cases, it's been a pretty sharp pullback we've seen in commodity prices since about May of this year, I would say. Um, how do you see the near term right now? Is it still a sort of uh, undecided, choppy uh, market action, or, is, or have we bottomed out? It would look like we've bottomed out. Really? Uh, the Encompass Fund, which, as you say, is long-term investing. We're not traders. We're a mutual fund uh, focused on long-term investing. We're not a commodity fund uh, particularly, but we're a fund that tries to find, uh, get themes, figure out where there's going to be good capital gains appreciation long term. And several years ago, we felt that that was in the various commodities, uh, gold and silver and copper and uh, some of the uh, energy complex. And you know, so, several years ago, what, three, four years ago, well, you came fund, a little bit late to the, no, to no, the trend, we, didn't we, you? Uh, <laughs> the fund is five, a little over five years okay. old. We started in June of 2006. Well, we also invest for individual client accounts, and we started investing in gold in about 2002, 2003, when gold was about $300 an ounce. And we have felt, uh, continue to feel, that it's headed higher. Now, along the way, that you have some corrections, you have some profit taking, you have some uh, headlines that may uh, spook uh, some of the uh, traders, and so you get some volatility. Uh, with the commodities and with the stocks. But we feel that uh, there's certainly the long-term trends for the commodities are still intact, headed higher, and the stocks, and we, we invest in stocks. The Encompass Fund is a stock investor. We don't do futures. Uh, How about, would you use the GLD uh, for your gold proxy? Uh, we tend not to use the GLD as a, for the gold proxy because we invest in the companies. We do research, we do site visits, and we'll tend to invest in uh, the gold companies themselves rather than GLD for the Encompass Fund. For individual clients, we, do, we have and we do use GLD and some of the other uh, ETFs, commodity ETFs. But we find for Encompass Fund, we want to be invested in uh, what we think are the best stock companies for the different commodities. Now let's set gold aside for a second because some people would say it's it's a quasi currency. So we'll put it aside. Let's let's talk about something more economically sensitive. Copper, for example, uh, which has fallen very sharply recently, and you know we could see the correlation between weak copper prices and negative growth in Europe a dramatic slowdown in growth here in the U.S. We went from like a 2.3% GDP last year growth rate to about at least the first half of this year, you know, a, a 1%. Um, China still growing, but it's come down from double digit growth. So, I mean, isn't that saying something? And, and you know, given uh, the policies that are out there now, which everywhere you look pretty much is like austerity, and that's putting the fiscal brakes on uh, every region. Uh, isn't that a negative uh, environment? Uh, it's a negative environment, but probably more on a shorter term basis. Uh, you talk about, and, and very correctly, copper being a good barometer of global economic activity. And as global economic activity reports come out daily and weekly and monthly, uh, it affects the day-to-day -day price of copper. But long term, copper has been going up. It was some years ago, it was 70 cents a pound and then a dollar and a dollar and a half and then two dollars and uh, has gotten as high as four and uh, currently is in the mid threes, say, g give or take. And uh, recently got down to, let's say, three dollars a pound, uh, but is rising and we think it will continue to rise. And while, uh, as you point out, uh, Europe's growth is nominal, uh, the U.S. Negative. is or negative. Yeah. Uh, U.S. growth is nominal or modest. Uh, and uh, but a lot of the rest of the world and you mentioned China and China is extremely important and particularly when it comes to what the price is uh, on a day to day basis for copper. 
depending on each re report that comes out. But China, while its growth may be down from 10 percent to 6 percent, that's on a far larger base. The 6 percent growth today is on a far larger base and is a bigger number than the 10 percent growth of, say, three years ago. So uh, China is still growing and India is growing, uh, Brazil, other parts of South America, other parts of Asia. And, and on a global basis, and, and these days we feel that uh, from an investment standpoint, you really do need to look globally and act globally. There is still growth and there's still need and use for copper. And uh, we, we are still uh, bullish on copper and particularly the copper companies. Okay, but the growth story, I've heard that many, many times. And I mean, uh, the, you know, growth has been the norm throughout history. I mean, you know, populations have grown, demand has grown, but supply has grown uh, in tandem with that. And that's how come we've tended to see, you know, commodity prices behave more or less in a cyclical fashion. You have a period of very flat prices, then you'll have a period where you'll see a spike which could play out over a number of years. Then we kind of revert back to the mean. What you're saying, I guess, is that that behavior, that pattern is finished, it's done. And no, we're, I don't, we're on sort of a secular rise. I which don't will, think that pattern is done. You know, there still will be longer term cycles, but the, the determination is where are we currently? Are we at the end of that upward cycle? Or are we at the beginning? We think we're more in the middle, in the that, middle. The, that the long-term trends, the, the, the secular cycles for commodities tend to be a multi-year, 10, 15, maybe 20 years. We're maybe halfway through that time frame when you look at uh, various commodities, uh, uh, copper, uh, we think uh, there's, there's very good opportunities in some of the other industrial metals, the lesser known ones, such as vanadium and manganese and graphite uh, that are being used in the technology right. tools of today. And, and you talk about, oh, you look back over the, the history and, and supply grew and did demand grow. These days, demand is growing. There's a lot more people with money that want the products that need a copper or vanadium or manganese or, or silver. Right. Uh, and it is more difficult to, to find and get those commodities out of the ground. It's, it takes a lot longer to find it. It takes a lot longer to permit. It's uh, more expensive. Uh, the governments are not uh, just allowing people to do what, you know, go in, find a deposit, dig it up. No, you have to go through permitting. You right. have to go through negotiations often with the local peoples uh, and what they're going to get in exchange for uh, working on the project or working with the company on the project. So it, it is a, uh, takes longer. It's a longer time frame. It's more exp expensive right. to get the supply to keep up with the demand. Uh, I hear you. Uh, but, um, and clearly, you know, actual demand for consumption for industrial uses you know that is a factor it will remain a factor <clears throat> what about investors look the commodity theme has you know become very popular with investors and we've seen the advent of a lot of new tools and instruments that allow investors to get involved in commodities etfs being one example how much of it do you think now is a, a tail wagging the dog type of scenario? Uh, it, it's some. It's 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 hard to quantify. Uh, the would you say it's small? Would you say it's significant? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's it's in the middle. And uh, an example would be taking gold. Gold has several ETFs. The most uh, popular one, the best known the one, GLD. is GLD, and. Uh, the, the price of gold has gone up, and it's gone up over, for, this will be the 11th year in a row, gold has, price has gone up. It has some fluctuations along the way, but it still goes up. And we think it'll continue to, it'll be higher this year, and it'll be higher next year. Central banks are once again buyers of gold uh, for the first, second time this year, second year in a row. And, but the commodity, the gold stocks, many of them are not doing as well 
uh, Doesn't that currently bother you? As, as the price of gold. And probably one of the reasons is the gold ETF. People don't have to buy gold stocks. If they want to have some involvement with gold, they can buy the gold ETF. So that has some effect. But uh, on a longer term basis, and I'm not talking about 10 or 20 or 30 years, I'm talking about ye ye months or years, th those that disconnect between the price of the commodity and the price of the stocks that are finding and producing the commodities uh, fluctuate, but tend to, uh, when, when, they, when they are trailing, when they've been behind right. the gold stocks, as they are currently and have been for a while, they tend to then catch up and move ahead of the price of the commodity. We think that's going to happen even with uh, the, the uh, ETFs in right. gold, the ETFs in silver. Now, do you think that most people nowadays have some exposure to commodities or still the majority don't? The majority, the great majority, really? do not. Really? Do not. The statistics, the studies show that it is still uh, gold and silver uh, and, and the other commodities, but focusing on gold and, and silver, are still very much under owned, not only by individual investors, but by institutions, right. by the, the pension funds, the endowment funds. And so that there is a lot of room for growth and we feel so appreciation. So what, what, quickly, what would be your number one um, you know, recommendation? Would it be gold? Would it be silver? Would it be oil? Which one are you most bullish on? We're contrarians. We're value players. We are, we are positive on uranium. 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 Uranium Which has been tumbled, beat down. Right, right, it's exactly, tumbled yeah. after uh, the, the, the Japan earthquake, Japan earthquake right. and, and tsunami and the problems they've right. had with the reactors in Japan and, and f the political noise coming out right. of Germany. Right. Uh, the, <clears throat> uranium is out of favor. The uranium stocks are way All out right. of favor. If you have a longer term view, uranium. But gold, gold remains what everybody looks at and uh, the problems of the world that you made reference to, many of the problems, haven't been solved. They may be on their way. The printing presses are still running. We think gold, and again, because it's under owned by institutions, right. by central governments, right. and by individuals, is going to continue right. to do well, quite well. A contrarian. I like that. I consider myself to be one as well. That's it. I want to thank Marshall Beryl. This is Mike Norman. That's it for now. See you next time. Bye-bye.